Hi everyone and welcome to this week's episode of Gaffer and Gear. Uh, this episode's a bit of a mixed grill, so I'm going to be uh, giving some advice on cheap RGB lights, or basically cheap LED lights in general, uh, what, to, what you should do when you buy them. Um, uh, give you a couple of handy little tips and uh, cover uh, what's changed in lights in terms of their firmware since I reviewed them. So uh, updating, basically updating my reviews and also covering things that I got wrong in reviews. Uh, but before we get into all that, uh, I just want to open an invitation up to everybody. So on the 26th of May, so that's Sunday the 26th, from 1pm onwards, Arthur from UPR Tech, UPR Tech manufacture uh, LED lights and color spectrometers. Arthur from UPR Tech will be here demonstrating to me his uh, latest uh, RGB light and also his latest color spectrometer. So the, another LED light, well, what could it possibly do? Well, this LED light, you can use a color spectrometer. Take a reading off uh, your location lighting, for example. Uh, the spectrometer can give you your XY value coordinate, so your color map coordinate. You can then dial that into the light. Now, this isn't something new. You can do this with a sky panel, for example. So it gives you an exact color match to your light. But here's the problem with the existing lights that we've got you can get a sterile match. You can't actually do anything with the light from that point on. So where this light is different is once you've dialed in your XY value as your base color, you can then apply a gel from the gel library. You can then apply a, uh, a, hue, ang a hue saturation intensity mode to it. So you can actually get creative with it after you've applied the XY value. Uh, so look, if you want to come along to this, uh, look, just send me a message. I'll have my email address below just to, so I can send you the address. Uh, look, if you know me personally, just send me a text or phone me up. Let me know you're coming. And look, it really is an open invitation. So it does matter if you're a film student, cinematographer, a gaffer, uh, you know, if you run a lighting business that's in competition to me. That doesn't matter at all. Uh, gaffer and Gear is about sharing the knowledge. And also, um, one thing I want to achieve with this, uh, with this channel is to get the communication open between us end users and the manufacturers. Because gone are the days where gaffers used to, uh, gaffers are the manufacturers. That, those days are gone. Lights are being made by engineers. So we need to get that communication between us, the end user, and them. So that's what uh, events like these will be about. All right, one thing I'd like to talk about is sometimes I'm late getting a video up. And uh, if it's been longer than a couple of weeks, I get um, a lot of messages from people saying, please continue making videos. Um, you know, you're the only channel that uh, is giving us real relevant uh, gaffer lighting information. Um, uh, two things, uh, number one, uh, I'm not giving up. I just, uh, sometimes it's hard to find the time, particularly if I'm on a, a big project. And number two, um, I'm actually not the only uh, channel out there that ha is really relevant to gaffers. Um, uh, two channels I could recommend. Uh, number one is Meet the Gaffer. Uh, that is a fantastic channel. As the name suggests, it's gaffers, 100% um, on target, 100% relevant. And I've learned a lot from their channel. The only criticism I've got of their channel, really, is if you're gonna watch it and you haven't seen it before, you need a good day to a day and a half off work to, to watch it because um, you're just gonna go from one to the next. Uh, very, very relevant information. Make sure you give yourself some time. The other channel that it's not 100% um, on, on topic for lighting, but it's a damn good channel is Grip Tips, particularly if you're uh, wanting to learn how to use the stands, the knuckles, the boom arms, things like that. It's a very, very good hardware channel. Uh, both channels are awesome. Uh, I'm subscribed to them. And if you love my channel, you should subscribe to theirs. They're fantastic. So we're entering an era of affordable RGB lights. And I've had some clients ask me questions about uh, setting up studios, things like that, because uh, now they can afford to buy RGB lights and have them as their psych lights and generate colors behind them like I'm doing here. My advice to you if you're looking at doing that with cheaper RGB lights is, um, yeah, sure, go ahead. Some of these uh, cheaper lights that have come out now are actually quite good. But my genuine advice from, um, from buying cheaper brands of lights, and I do use cheaper brands, not just uh, sky panels and expensive things like that. The cheaper brands, you have to buy them all at the same time if you want them to match. So if you ideally want four, eight, 16 lights, you need to buy them at the same time. My experience has been if I buy a, a batch of lights 
and one of the lights breaks down and I get a replacement, that replacement doesn't color match. Now, they're usually pretty close, so like if you had one as a key light and one as a fill, you'd be hard pressed to notice the difference, but if you were lighting a psych wall, a certain color, uh, you would definitely notice that one doesn't line up. So look, if you're buying expensive lights, the top tier lights, this isn't a problem, but if you're buying cheaper LED lights, you do need to buy them all in the one hit if you want a color match. Now, if you're into your lighting and you think you know everything about lighting, the next segment's gonna sort of blow your mind a little bit. So I've got two of these um, Luxley cellos and I just bought a third one recently. Uh, however, I noticed when I was using the third one, it didn't match the other two. The, the color was, was much better. The color accuracy and color rendering was, was improved. So I thought, oh, hello, it must've had a firmware update. So I had a look at the front of the units and I couldn't believe what I saw. So both of these units in the photo here are both set to 3,200 Kelvin. Now the one that's running uh, warm white and green emitters is the older firmware and the one that's got um, a whole stack of emitters running is the uh, newer firmware. Now when I uh, put the older units uh, onto my computer and downloaded the new firmware into them, uh, uh, the old units didn't uh, operate this way at all. So it must be more than just a firmware update. But um, what's interesting is the color science. Um, you've got two completely different ways of generating the same colors and um, they seem to have come up with a, a much better way of generating colors. The one thing I have noticed looking at the newer light is the, uh, the RGB emitters in, uh, in the rows look like they're running off two separate light engines uh, or two separate sets of drivers. So that might be how they're achieving uh, such a staggeringly huge uh, increase in performance. Okay, so I've got a Luxley timpani here, and since I reviewed these, these have had a firmware update and a few things have been improved. But before we get into that, I just want to show you something, give you a little tip. So this is a spare part off a V-Lock battery, so it's the V-Lock mount. So you can get uh, these off eBay. They're about $10 for a packet of 12. Uh, so what I do with these, I buy these and I super glue them onto the back of my transformers. So if I've got a light that has a V-lock mount built onto the back and I've got a transformer to run off mains power, I can now mount the transformer to the, uh, the V-lock mount and I don't have to have it hanging around. So just a very quick little tip there. Now uh, with the Luxley Timpanies, um, since, I've, uh, since I reviewed them, they, they have had a firmware update and, and pretty much the bulk of the issues uh, that I identified in the, original, in the original review have been fixed. So number one, uh, they used to crash on boot up about one in five times. They no longer crash on boot up. Uh, the second thing was a problem with the batteries. Um, they used to misdiagnose a charge battery as a flat battery. Um, that still happens a little bit, but out of my 28 batteries that I have, it only happens on a handful, about three or four. So I suspect it might be a problem with the batteries now, not a problem with the light. Uh, so that's been fixed. The other thing that's been improved is they have a master and slave mode. So I've had a bit of a play with the master and slave mode and it works uh, super reliably, it's super fast. The only criticism I have of the master and slave mode is nothing comes up on, on the display to indicate whether the light is a master or a slave. Okay, so next up, let's talk about the Nanguan tubes. Um, I'm seriously over talking about these. I get um, a heck of a lot of messages about these. And I understand why people are messaging me. It's because you can't find any information online. Um, but look, uh, in the video, I said that the, um, the units don't charge unless they're turned on. They have to be turned on to charge. They've now fixed that. So you can have the unit turned off and not running, plug it into a charger and it will charge. Okay, so they have changed that since. Um, now, one problem I have come across with these units is the backing moves around and covers, the dis and covers over the display. So what I've done in my units, if that continues to happen, I basically just take the uh, top of the unit off and uh, take out the backing, which is basically just a piece of cardboard. So that's how I've got around that problem. Now, the next question I get asked about is, can you feed DMX in and out of these? Um, yes and no. So if you've got the battery version, this version here that runs off the batteries, you cannot feed DMX into it. However, they do make another version that has a cable DMX in as well as a power cable in, and that's made for studio and that will run off DMX. 
Okay, so one thing I got wrong in the review is I said the power inlet is 15 volts, okay? So I made that mistake because I read here it says 15, 15 volts DC, so stupid me. Um, it can run off 12 volts in, so you can get, as long as you've got a transformer that's powerful enough to run it, um, you can run this off 12 volts and charge it simultaneously. Now, speaking of charging, this is a 12 volt transformer that I got made up by the guys at Technical Arts Solutions. It outputs uh, 252 watts and I've got it set up to eight outlets. Now I've got two of these, so I can charge 16 tubes simultaneously. So you can buy a 12 volt transformer for your charging. And the idea behind this too is I'll eventually get round to making up a rig that I can put eight tubes in and use it as an eight tube light. Now, if you're looking at making up a harness or, or something to connect the lights into, you need to buy terry clips. That's the thing you need to look for. I get asked about this a lot. So you need to buy terry clips and they come in two sizes, T8 and T12. You need to buy the T12 terry clips. Okay, so the next uh, bit of conversation I wanna have is about RE sky panels. So um, I've got six RE sky panels and two of them have had to go back to RE for repairs. So the first one lost a single, uh, single LED emitter. So just bad luck, single LED emitter went down, of course, out of warranty. Now, because that single LED emitter went down, the whole row of LED emitters went down. So it absolutely had to be repaired. Now, the quote from Ari for fixing that is 830 euros, okay? 830 euros to do that repair. Now, I've got that one back and I've got another one going off to Ari that's got a calibration loss issue. So I just want to make, uh, if you own sky panels in Melbourne, I just want you to make you aware of the cost of ownership, how much it costs to keep these things running, just in case you're one of the few people that's undercutting us. Now, if you have Avenger or Manfrotto C-Stands or any of their products and you need spare parts, you can now get them through Technical Art Solutions. So uh, this is the uh, sliding leg lock off for a Avenger C-Stand. Okay, so one more very quick tip. Um, if you've got snap bags, uh, basically um, these small snap bags, soft boxes, they're, um, they look, they're fantastic. They pack down into a really small size, super portable, all of that, all of that stuff. But you probably find that they take too long to set up and you want to keep them assembled. Well, the problem I found with it is when you keep them assembled, they tend to, they tend to push in and lose their shape. But I found a very quick uh, solution to that. And that is I uh, just buy basically a piece of metal like this, bend it to 90 degrees, and then I cover it with Velcro and I use that to reinforce the corners. So I've got one uh, down here reinforcing the corner. Okay, so that's what I use to reinforce the corner and it keeps the light in shape. All right, so in case you didn't follow that, here's the piece of metal. It's got the Velcro on the outside, matching the Velcro that's on the outside of the uh, snap bag. And it's got the opposite Velcro on the inside of the bend. Basically, stick that into the corner. And now I've got a reinforced steel edge. Okay, so just before I go, uh, just another reminder again. So Sunday, the 26th of May at 1 p.m. from 1 p.m. onwards, We'll have Arthur from UPR Tech here showing off a new light and colour spectrometers. So if you want to come along, just message me. Uh, I'm in Mount Waverley, so uh, if you're near the area, got nothing to do on a Sunday, pop along and have a look. And again, it doesn't matter if you're uh, in a lighting company that's opposition to me. Let's all get together and, uh, and share the knowledge. I'm Andrew Locke, see you on the next episode of Gaffering Gear.